can do it. Hey. Oh, that's not the podcast name. The podcast name is <laughs> See What Happens. <laughs> this is Rob Schneider. Uh, not the You Can Do It podcast. It's the See What Happens mm-hmm. podcast. And David's going to play that clip right now again. My mom was very controlling, truthfully. It was good, though. I, I guess, you know. The only thing I remember from my whole childhood thing, I remember most of my mom yelling at me. See what happens? You fell down. See what happens? You're crying. See what happens? You hurt yourself. See what happens? You broke that. See what happens? See what happens? I remember one time we were playing basketball about three miles away from the house. Somebody twisted an ankle. All of a sudden, you hurt. See what happens? Dude, that's your mom on a mountain over there. See what happens? And there it was. So people uh, got that. That was the clip. Oh. See what happens clip. You know, my mom, Pilar. See what happens, the Filipino lady? Yes, I know who she is. Okay. See what happens? Mm -hmm. Now, today is a very special see what happens because we have my lovely wife, Patricia, on there. Patricia Schneider. Patricia Maya also. Hola. And uh, I I refer to her, I, I would love to refer to her on this podcast as the... Humble opinion of the Mexican. So we're going to get the humble opinion of the Mexican and also our mm-hmm. partner in crime, our partner on the Netflix TV series Real Rob, seasons one and two streaming now, Jamie Lasso. Thanks, guys. Great to be great to be here. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Loving it. Yeah, so uh, you welcome back. And I guess um, some of the things we'll talk about today, one of them is going to be that... Uh, Jamie seems to think it's okay to live in Alaska and still be in show business. Now, why is that? Why do you think that that's okay? It's a real problem. It came up today during a very important meeting, mm-hmm. and I really had no explanation. Yeah. Well, your kids live there. That's right. I think that's a good uh, reason. Yeah, but the kids being there, too, is also kind of, in a way... I mean, look, Alaska is a beautiful country and everything. I love it. In country? Sh- I'm sorry. Be- beautiful, it's not a country. Beautiful country. <laughs> Jesus Christ! I'm I'm the Mexican here, and I I I know it's not a country. Well, okay. Um, well, we bought it from Russia not that long ago. But mm-hmm. no, what happened was mm-hmm. I said it's beautiful country mm-hmm. as far as like the terrain is beautiful. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Okay. Mm. I, maybe if I did say it's a beautiful country, then I'm an idiot. But I I, meant I think I you're trying you to fix it. I think I'm trying to go back and yes. You meant like it's beautiful country. Yeah, like just like someone would say, like America's beautiful state. (laughs) (laughs) You know, you're not helping me. Oh, so that was the opposite. I thought it was. You see, that was the opposite of helping me. You were hurting my, making me look more like an idiot. No, it's a um, a beautiful país. I have a question for you guys. Beautiful. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. But in June, it's beautiful. Yeah, I wouldn't want to be there like in April where it's still snow. To June is really nice, especially June twenty second specifically. Uh, mm-hmm. they, I have a question for what's you guys. What's the most so, common? Yes. What's I have a question before you get to mm-hmm. my question. Your question. What's the most commonly qu- uh, question that you get from people? Who you, you tell them you live in Alaska, which is unusual, mm-hmm. being in the lower forty eight, and you must get asked questions for being living a, uh, for making the mistake of being in show business and living in Alaska. What is the question that that irks you the most, Jamie Lasso? For living in Alaska, when you tell people in the Uber, go. What what irks me the most? There's a more common question than the one that irks me the most. The one that irks me the most is, like, why do you live there? Mm-hmm. Because it makes me feel like they think I'm stupid without even bothering to talk to me and figure out a reason I'm stupid. Yeah, <laughs> it it, it, make, it just puts me on the defense. Like, well, like obviously I lived there for a reason. Mm-hmm. I marry a girl and I have children there. Yeah. Most common question is, but they can still ask, why did you do that? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's still valid. Still, and no good answer for that one either. Yeah, but okay, so go ahead. And the other question is, is it dark all the time? Yeah. Did you say yes? Yeah, it fucking is, unfortunately. It is? Well, well in, uh, in the winter. Like, like, like nine months. How long, months, how nine long months is the, the winter? Year, nine <laughs> months. It's, it's about, it's, it's, it's basically, so I'm going to get. You see, we're just as annoying to you right now as other people who don't know you, and you're driving in the Uber going, is it dark all the time there? <laughs> like, when you wake up, it's dark. When you go to bed, it's dark. Yeah. And Does so, that mess with your curriculum, uh, your- uh, You just called it. Your curricular uh, sleep resumes, resumes. Get that all the time. Does mm-hmm. that get your RNAs going there? You get your sleep RNAs? <laughs> what is that accent from? Uh, it's just basically a, a generic Southern accent. Mm-hmm. 
Interesting. So it, there's some day. It could in, be like Texas, but it's actually more like Stop interrupting, Schneider. Lo, lo, Let him lower, talk. Oh, huh. Yes, go ahead. Oh, but so I don't know a ton about it, and someone will correct me on the internet after they hear this, but there's there's the one day in December yeah. when it's the most darkness. It's basically 24 hours. And then there's a day in the summer when it's basically 24 hours of sunlight. Mm -hmm. And from that one day in December to the day in the summer, it slowly becomes a little bit more and more light. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So there's a lot of darkness for a when when do you stop crying when that happens? Usually as you're flying out. (laughs) You you do fly a lot. Yeah, you have to travel a lot. So that was the irritating part to me. You you try to go through your life. I've known you for about 10 years now. You go through your life trying to justify everything like it's okay. And not just in flying, but my favorite one is like, dude, it's no problem. I can leave Alaska. I'll leave Fairbanks at uh, at midnight. And then I get to Seattle on, on uh, Tuesday. And then I'm in L.A. <laughs> by Thursday afternoon so that I can turn around, fly back Friday, and go back with the kids. It's like, what? That's not normal. I, it takes you a day and a half to get anywhere. In my defense, I have to go to immigration. I mean, it's another country. <laughs> <laughs> See what you started. It takes a long time. <laughs> speaking of another and country, I didn't start that. You did. Okay. Speaking of that, yes. the, another country. Okay. Another a country, as you're like to, as you, uh-huh. as you want to mm-hmm. say. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're from Mexico. <laughs> How do you get a crap on? <laughs> you're from Mexico. Yes. Another. That's an actual. Mm-hmm. That's an actual country. country yeah. You don't have to fly over from America. You have to fly over in, in, in Alaska. You got to fly over a foreign country mm-hmm. to get back to America. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the there you can just go to the country that you are actually trying to go to. <laughs> that's a that's a good point. And, uh, yeah, you shouldn't live somewhere like yeah. where I live, and where you, you could be roaming while your flight is going home. <laughs> <laughs> that happens to me. I'll come home and I'll be like, "Hey, thanks for coming to camp." Like I'll get the roaming message. <laughs> you know, like when you go to another country. Thanks for coming to, to Nova Scotia. I said, "Wait a minute." Yeah. yeah. Um, so wait, wait, Mexico. Yeah, what about Mexico? Well, that's where then? you're from. Yes, I love it. I you love it. I love it. When you want to come to America, you don't have to fly over another country to get here like... Uh, Jamie? Jamie does. Yes. You could even drive there, can't you? Yes, yes, yeah, I yeah, guess. But you never you spent time to, like... Uh, I've never been to you, Tijuana. You never spent time in that part of the country, right? I mean, no. Mexico City, let's be honest, that's like... The New York City of Mexico, wouldn't you say? Well, what would be the um, the proper one? It's because it's it's a it's a big city. It's a big city. It's one of the biggest cities in the world. I believe mm-hmm. nobody knows exact population, but it's safe to say over twenty. Yeah, nobody million. knows. Even even the Mexicans, we we have no idea. But it could be twenty five million, right? Maybe, maybe more. Yeah, maybe more. Yes, who knows? Nobody knows. Who knows? Wow. Yeah. So if uh, Mexico City is the New York City of Mexico, mm-hmm. what would Tijuana be? I don't know. You've never even been there. I've never been to Tijuana. She's never been to that side of Mexico. Okay. It's no. very cosmopolitan and it's very... It's no, no, urban it's side. just like I don't have it's any... Huge. I don't have family in Tijuana. Like mm. I don't have anyone to visit over there and I have no curiosity also. Well, yeah, the, you know, here, like, you know what? We got to check out the cultural Mecca, Tijuana. Okay. I just remember like when you're under 18 and, yes. and like they changed it because I was... Um, when I was a young man, <laughs> mm-hmm. you could still drink at 18... Hmm. In Hawaii. Well, you can drink at 18 in Mexico. Yeah, right, exactly. So we used to go to Mexico mm-hmm. from California, and we go mm-hmm. down there, and you could drink. Rosarita, which is a nice little place. We go, and then we drink, start drinking beer, and then you'd move over to tequila, and then you realize, I just made the biggest mistake of my <laughs> life. <laughs> yeah. At yeah. 18? That was at 18? Yeah. yeah. Wow. But at 18 also, I think, I mean, I think we could have dri- driven at 16 or 15. It wouldn't have mattered. But like but like 18 makes a little bit more sense to go mm-hmm. there. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't mind going. Mm-hmm. It's just like every time I talk to someone who loves Tijuana and they go a lot over there is because they say, oh, the tacos are amazing in Tijuana. Hmm. But truthfully, I have to say. I did eat some of the food there. It was great. For me, the best tacos are in Mexico City. And what do you think about the tacos in Alaska, that other country that you live in? We do have one incredibly good taco place. Mm -hmm. They fly in the meat once a week, and uh, (laughs) it's very good. I have a I have a taco question. The, so the spicy igloo, mm-hmm. the one you get, yeah, it's not not a big taco, yeah. not a big taco area. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. So I've been on some cruise ships mm-hmm. where I've mm-hmm. gone, gotten off and gotten tacos in Mexico. When you get these tacos that are the best, is it a mm-hmm. restaurant or is it a cart? It has to be it? a cart. Okay. It but, has to be uh, a cart in like, Mexico City. It has to be a cart. Well, that those are the best uh, flavor because it doesn't. If it doesn't have the dirt. <laughs> doesn't taste the same. 
So it's got to be a grill. No, they're they're around. very good. Uh, no, they're very good restaurants there. The taco oh, yeah. taco restaurants. That's all they sell. I like as a, a taco al restaurant. Pastor. They're yeah. good. I went to a taco place that had like uh, it was chicken and beef. Mm-hmm. No, 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 no. I'm sorry, pork and chicken. Okay. And it was in, on tacos, and you had to you stand. And there's like little standing stations mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. where you stand and eat, and then you put that. And it's all about the side stuff. You know, it's all about what you put on it. Mm-hmm. Hot sauce, you know, yeah, hot sauces and lemon, lemon, and then there's, um, you know, this uh, guacamole and other mm-hmm. stuff you put on. You know, there was this salsa. place. It's the salsas. Mm. There was a place. And truthfully, not should... guacamole in Mexico City. No, yeah, they do. They no, do but I, I, they didn't have that as like one of those sides to have there. It was different no, spices. No, the and spices, stuff. Yeah, the, yeah, the salsas are different. But you know what? When I used to work in Mexico City in Telehit. There was this taco stand that I loved, and I always tried to get one of my coworkers, my now compadre Gerardo, to go with me and eat there, and he never wanted to go there. Why is he worried about eating on the street? Yes, because he was like very concerned about germs and all that stuff, and he was like, "No, those are like too greasy. What if they don't wash their hands?" And, and I was where, like, "Where's the meat coming from?" Yes, and I was like, "But that's the whole point." <laughs> I, I used to have this concern. I remember. How, how are you going to build an immune system if you don't do that? That's true. I, I used to have a belief like that where I would not want to eat at a place. That if something went wrong, like salmonella, they could just drive away. <laughs> <laughs> that always concerned me. Yeah. No, they that's why I never wanted up. to do anything. Whereas if you died doing it, people go, oh, that's sad. But what the hell was he thinking? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, like to me, like parasailing. Oh, yeah. Something mm-hmm. like that, you know. Because yeah. I told you that story where I was parasailing in Mexico, right? No. No. And I'm putting it, well, well I, they wanted me to go parasailing in Mexico. So, so I said, so what, what does one do here at the uh, at this resort? <laughs> What are they? My little Mr. Snyder, they got the swimming pool. You can get the, 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 the swimming pool. There's the, the, the eternity pool. It's where the, 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 the eternity pool. The eternity pool. Infinity. I'm sorry, the infinity pool. <laughs> it's, I'm doing It's what he told me. <laughs> the eternity pool. That's like the one from Cocoon. That's, like, that's, that's, that's like if you die. It's like if you die in there. Yeah. <laughs> then you go to eternity. It's like a cocoon you. pool. Where you, Thank you. you didn't know where this bit was going to go. I could have gone there. Now you stepped on it. Uh, <laughs> hey, the, the, I love the maternity <laughs> pool. So you guys ever been in that <laughs> one? The maternity pool. You got the eternity pool. The paternity you got, pool. You, you ever get, get in that paternity one? Paternity pool. Tell you if it's your kid. You got the infinity <laughs> pool. You got the interrupted <laughs> pool. Sorry. You get the pool where your drugs get interrupted. <laughs> Mister Snyder, you can do all those things if you want to. The interruption pool, you got the infinity pool, the eternity pool, the maternity, the paternity pool, all they pull it all next to each other. And then up the but if you get I said, Well what if I already went swimming, I'm already sunburned, now what? Well, Mr. Snyder, also we can go you can go see my brother, Ridolfo, he over the play he played the he the, the beef in the playa. You can go in the you can go the put in the playa, you go in the, the parasailing, you know, you get in the I said, How does that work? Well, you go over there to see my brother, Rodolfo, you go him, and he, he say, like, and he gets you on the boat, and they, they take you to the pair thing. Okay, I'll just fucking talk to him. So I go over there, and before I'm halfway there, I go, hi, I'm Rodolfo, I'm the brother of Eduardo <laughs> in the front desk. And anyway, you want to go to the pair It's beautiful. So I said, yeah, let's check us out. So he's putting the stuff, and I'm just saying, you know, let me just ask how this thing works. Mm-hmm. I said, well, uh, I'm my other brother, Gerardo, he's in the boat. I give him the signal, hoo, 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 and then he, <laughs> then he takes off, and then the bo- and then you're the, you're attached to the parachute, and then the parachute, you go up in the air, and you go, you fly over, you fly over the water, and you go over the rocks, and I went, what, what? <laughs> then you fly the water, and then you go over the rocks, and we land on the beach. I said, oh, what's this going over the rocks thing? Yeah, well, you know, you fly the water, mostly the water. If you pay more, we avoid the rocks, <laughs> but uh, the cheapest we have. So we have the rocks, so we can go in the... It's it's the not, different packages. It's not, yeah, it's a different package. You can go the, <laughs> if you want to do the infinity pool plus over the rocks, it is one price. <laughs> the paternity pool with the, uh, over the beach in the water, it's a different price. And uh, I'm just, I'm just uh, you know, going, okay, so, so you, then you put... I'm putting you're still in for this? I cannot believe you're still... Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to be a little less in, but I'm still like, eh, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, I didn't see any dead bodies on the fucking beach. And then I'm, I swear to God, he's putting the thing on me. I'm, I'm not making this up. And they, I said, and I looked down, and part <laughs> of the safety equipment was a popsicle stick. <laughs> oh, my God. And I said, what, 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 hey, what, what is that? Oh, uh, yes, well, the, the, the rope, it got it around the, the, the vest, and then they go around the popsicle stick. <laughs> oh my <laughs> god! I said, po- I said, popsicle stick cannot be part of my safety equipment. <laughs> Holy shit! He's like, it was a popsicle, but it melted. <laughs> <laughs> it used to be the whole popsicle. It, it, was, it was gonna be your snack, but it melted. Yeah. <laughs> There's a joke on it, so you can laugh as you crash to your death. 
We are wrapping around the particle <laughs> thick and the vet and then they go in the, I tell my, my bichuar, herar, but they go, <laughs> and then we go up and you hang over the rocks and I thought, no. You didn't, me, you didn't, get do, me it. Out you didn't of, do it. Mm-hmm. Get me out of this fucking thing. Popsicle yeah. stick? Popsicle stick. I'm glad you looked. I said, what the, the fuck? popsicle stick. No, but that's just it. You know, you, you know, there's something, I will say America has got its issues and problems, so, but there are enough lawsuits and enough lawyers. Mm-hmm. Like San Francisco is one of the cities where I, where I, I grew up in the city, but it's, it's one of the cities in America where there literally are Mm-hmm. One lawyer for every seven people in San Francisco. Hmm. I mean, it's like really wow. okay. I could be exaggerating. One lawyer for every eleven people. Mm-hmm. Still, that's like seventy thousand, you know, or whatever lawyers because eight hundred thousand people. Wow, there. it's like it's crazy mm-hmm. how many lawyers are there, and there's that much kind of lawsuit. So wow. in that way, though, it does make things a little bit safer because mm-hmm. the guy with the popsicle stick. If that happened in America, you know, he'd be like, what happened? Well, the popsicle stick broke. I don't know what to tell you. He went into the rocks. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> Dude, <laughs> you can't be doing that shit. So there is some basic yes. safety. I mean, you're still some fucked up. There was something mm-hmm. happening originally. Something happened fucked up. And then somebody did something about it. And mm-hmm. that's what's... Yeah. That's no, it, some it, countries that just don't fix, you know. Yeah, like, uh, that's true. I agree. In Mexico, we have a lot of that. You know, I remember that now that you guys were talking about that, that last time I went with my one of my friends, uh, Diana, mm-hmm. to Acapulco. We rented one of those uh, motorcycles. What is it? Scooter? What is the name of that? The, uh, the Moped. S- no, 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 but in the water. How do you... Jet ski? Jet ski? We, we rented one because From we... My, my, my brother, Gerardo. <laughs> <laughs> he worked in the Acapulco. He, he, he was also doing the jet ski. He also did the jet ski when they're not doing the parasailing. So when, we, they, when the popsicle stick and they don't find the popsicle <laughs> stick, he rented the jet ski. So anyways, we, we rent this thing. Lo siento. We rented only one. Because we didn't want to spend the money mm-hmm. on it. So we said, we'll take turns. So you you take it for a little bit and then you come back. Do 15 minutes mm-hmm. or so and then come back and then I'll 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 do that. And then her boyfriend was there also. At, well, her boyfriend at the time. And uh, so anyway, so she goes first. Mm-hmm. And there were some rocks. <laughs> <laughs> and no, no, no. Wait. So we saw her like going behind the rocks. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, we, and then we didn't see her like for half an hour. Oh, and I remember thinking like, this asshole, she's just taking all the time. Right, you know, right. she's, not, uh, she's not letting us uh, use the jet ski. <laughs> and then her boyfriend was also upset because he was like, oh, probably she just went to another. He was like a, like a lunatic, jealous guy, right? So she, he's already he's thinking probably, like, he's she's already another, making out with make, another met guy. another guy in yeah. another jet ski. <laughs> so he was like, like yeah. And they're parasailing over the rocks with the popsicle <laughs> sticks, taking them off so they can make out with each other. I popsicle swear. stick free. That was that was ridiculous. So anyway, so finally she comes back, like when the time is uh, you know it's all mm-hmm. over, and I noticed that her hair was like extra messy. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "What happened?" I was like, "You asshole!" You know, like why did you take the you know the jet ski by yourself? And he said, "As soon as I went behind the rocks, I fell oh, off the jet ski." And no one was around. And she said, and I spent half an hour trying to get back, trying in. to get back in. Wow! Did she screw up the jet ski? More importantly, no, she did. She spent a half an hour trying to get back on the damn thing. Yes, she was exhausted when she came back, and she was like her hair was all messy. And she said that the thing that was like, you know, like the scariest, like she was trying to get back in, and it was really hard. Yeah, and then she started thinking, "What if there's a shark?" Oh god! Oh yeah, there you go. <laughs> then she was like terrified at it, but it was like, "How come no one goes and check?" You know, like uh, right. And, and I'd like to just say, to see if someone is alive. To be to be truthful, that's the same excuse I would use if I did find another guy in a jet ski and was banging him. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what I would say. My hair is a mess. I, yeah, I just started to get back on these things. I would like to say that then. I had nothing to do with it. I had to use all these condoms for traction. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. But I found it amazing. Like the first time I was ever in Brazil and like the first the first time I was in Mexico and uh, the street lights are just a suggestion. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> if if at all. And if anything, and Patricia, you correct me if I'm wrong. Mm-hmm. You know, you've been told, like your dad would tell you, like, don't stop at the stoplight. There, that's a sign of weakness. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> he doesn't say that. He didn't say that? No. No, it's like, no, they're, they're going to they're gonna know. <laughs> he's, you're just, the, he's just making these things up. That's hysterical. Yeah. You're the guy that they're going to go after because I look at this idiot stopping at a stop sign. Let's that, There's the victim right there. Let's get him. 
<laughs> no. But you know, that didn't come from dad, your dad? No. All right. No. But, but yes, it, but it is a suge- true. Yeah. You have to be careful. At, but, you know, not, not, not everywhere yeah. and not at all times. Mm-hmm. At night, yes, some people would not uh, stop at the stoplight. That's, that's true. And I remember, like, um, when I was in Rio de Janeiro for a film festival, and uh, <laughs> I remember, like, uh, nobody stopped. And, like, literally, I'd never seen pedestrians so scared shitless before. They literally would just, like, you know, they're just looking everywhere because they really know, like, mm-hmm. no one's going to stop for them. Yeah. Like, people in, in America, especially in L.A., you know, people don't, they don't even, like, they're just on their phone crossing the street. You're mm-hmm. dead if you do that in Rio de Janeiro. There's yeah, no, or in Mexico City. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I misunderstood when you first were talking about this, and I thought you meant the lamps along the street that illuminate the street. I thought you, you were saying that those were a suggestion. Traffic You're talking lights. about stoplights? Yeah. Traffic that lights. people just go through a red mm-hmm. light? Yeah, traffic lights. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah, no, 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 no. They don't stop, and literally, they just, they'll just look maybe a little bit just because somebody else could be coming. Some other lunatic is going the other way. So they're the lunatic going this way, and so they literally like you know will will slow down a little bit, but they're going to zoom. And some guys won't even do that; they'll just fly right through it. Wow. Yeah, but I mean, in Mexico City, people would stop at the stoplights. However, yeah. at at night, <laughs> <laughs> seriously, not like so dangerous. Bit, so no, no, no. But but you know why? Because you don't want to get robbed. Also, that's a big thing. So it's a big thing. In Is Mexico this true City. though that like there's a thing that I heard on the news mm-hmm. that um, people are buying fake phones to give away? Uh, oh, to the robber? Yeah, on the buses. Is that true? Have you no, heard that? I didn't know that. No, wow. I heard that. Where in Mexico? No, yeah. Wow. In Mexico, is Mexico City? No, wow. there's like there's like people who come on the bus and they'll like you know just come in and they'll rob people on the bus. It's like so they got these fake phones. Let's say, hey, please take mine. Put it in the bag and like uh-huh. that's so smart. I would mess it up and give them my real phone, then try to make a phone call <laughs> with a candy phone, whatever it is, filled with fake plastic yeah. phone. It's a pretty well, brilliant idea. You know, I mean, Mexico City. I, I would say it's a great place, and there are some dangerous city, yeah. areas, like anywhere. Yeah, like anywhere. So it's not. Like not all of it is, you know. I know, not like safe. Or sometimes when I was in, like in, in uh, Florence, you know, there are literally more pickpockets than tourists sometimes of the evening. <laughs> wow! In, in Florence, Italy, and the same thing in, um, in Amsterdam. If you're walking around at some par- some parts at late at night because we were shooting there, and you go, you know, I think there are more pickpockets than tourists at this point. Yeah. Mm. So it's just yeah, you know, you just got to use your head wherever you are. My friend got robbed. I lived in North Hollywood about 11 years ago, mm-hmm. and I lived in this condo just north of, I think it was Van Owen, you know, up there? Oh, yeah. And um, he was leaving my house, and he didn't have a lot of money at the time. He was watching my dog in exchange for being able to stay mm-hmm. at my place now and then. So he left with exactly 13 cents, which is how much it cost to get a large soda at the gas station. It was a special. They had a 30. Mm-hmm. So he had 13 cents in his pocket, and as he was leaving my place, he was robbed. This guy came up with a gun and said, give me all your money, and he said... Don't get mad at me, mm-hmm. but I I have thir- like I have I'll give you all my money, but it's only thirteen cents. The guy was like, well, "Fucking give it to me!" <laughs> and so he took my he took the thirteen cents, but my friend had nowhere to like go because he was at my house being robbed. Mm-hmm. Wow! So he had to go walk around like he li- you know to wait till the guy, robber guy left. Oh god! He probably lived in my building. Oh no! And then come back home. So it can happen anywhere. It could happen anywhere. Well, yeah, I'm not yeah. P- I'm not picking on anybody. I was just yeah. I was just giving a note. <laughs> Saying you can mention thank this. You. No, thank you for the note. The, and you know what though? And that's the reason that I am very paranoid. Because yeah. it happens. It happens a lot. Like we learned yeah. at a very young age in Mexico City just to, you know, be aware. I feel like in here you're right. People are just walking around with looking at their phones. Mm-hmm. Victims, and, uh, potential victims. Potential assuming victims. Cars assuming, will stop. assuming cars will stop or that nothing dangerous could happen to them. Yeah. And I just think we should all be alert always, just in case. You'll never know. I used to drive around. My dad used to, because uh, we lived in, the, you know, San Francisco. My dad used to drive me around and, and I would say like crazy people, like, you know, crazy people talking to mm-hmm. themselves and, you know, mm-hmm. having a bag full of stuff. I don't even know they had shopping carts, but, you know, mm-hmm. but they had like a bag full of stuff and he's talking to himself. And uh, I remember I saw this one homeless guy going, hey, there was a wolf. Eaten by a half a shark. <laughs> and I went to Dad. 
how does that person get that crazy? And he looked at me and said, it just happens. Wow. It mm. just happens. People get that crazy. And so I was like, but growing up in the city, they kind of had everything, you know. Mm -hmm. I loved it, though, because it was fun. Because you have, like, um, we used to go to Chinatown. And in Chinatown, there was a place called Sam Woe's. And when you were 16, you could get, like, beer at Sam Woe's. Damn. They would call it cold tea. You go, can I get a cold tea? <laughs> and then... Um, they would literally like, oh, no, no, no. Oh, it'll come to And they would come over and they'd bring you the uh, the Cold beer. Mm -hmm. And so we were 16 and go, this is the greatest thing ever. Mm -hmm. And then also because the Chinese, I mean, let's be honest. I mean, the Chinese, we all looked alike to them. <laughs> when we were mm -hmm. kids, they didn't, we look old enough. It could have been 21, could have been 15, <laughs> whatever. And so but it was just great. Sam Woe's was like this uh, it was old guy. And it had like, you know, the well, food was, it, it's open till 3 o'clock in the morning. And uh, so... Uh, that's where we go get great Chinese food and then have uh, uh, beer. Have beer. Mm -hmm. What an amazing find is it? I mean, that's amazing. Oh yeah, believe me. Mm -hmm. If you can get beer and you're 16, you know, and one of your friends, you're gonna find out that's about so, it pretty Sam, quick. Sam's mm -hmm. in jail right now, but I mean, so many great <laughs> beers. <laughs> I, but then, then, then it got. I'm sure it got tougher. But like, but that was like one of the places to to go. Cold tea. Cold tea, and it is mm. serving those, you know, those those kind of, uh, it was the plastic uh, glass, the plastic cup that's like uh, kind of, uh, it's got like a little shape to it, you know, and it's a little, um, uh, you can't exactly see through it, but it's plastic. You can mm -hmm. kind of see through it, but it's like, you know, they can use it in the washing machine and use it again, and it's this brown thing. So it looked like it could have been tea, right. but it was beer, you know. I think they knew what they were doing. Of course. But uh, it was it was a great place. Was if great you ordered place. the hot tea, a girl come out and give you a hand job. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you guys. <laughs> also, very close to that. That's at San Jose, I bet. But they used to have like I mean, what what, what I liked about the Chinese in Chinatown was like um, they had very interesting like desserts. And not my favorite. I mean, there's not like Italian desserts, but they would just like you know. I don't think the the Chinese and the you know at least that I grew up with ever figured out like there's cream, there's sugar, <laughs> there's butter <laughs> so in true. Chinatown. Like for the desserts, there's rice. We've got rice, and then there's old rice. And beans. And beans. So that's that's the weird one. Though. Really? Oh, yes. Patricia I can't doesn't do like that. that. One. I'm Mexican. For I dessert? I can't eat beans for dessert. I yeah, cannot. They do this. like It's like a gray goo. You know, if you go to like, you order number three, you got that one. The what is that? Oh, you cut, uh, come at the end of number four. You order number four. Come with, you know, you got the lomi <laughs> noodle. You got the pork fried rice. You get the orange chicken. And then you get that one. That one, number four. The oh, you got the oh, you got the, you know. And I said, what is it? Uh, what, what's in there? Everything in there. Everything. Everything in there. Everything. <laughs> like, what is it? Now, you know, tapioca, pork, pork, you know, lomi noodle. <laughs> so, you don't know what it is. But it's gray. And it was like, it's beans. It's like a bean, sweet bean. Yeah. Very, yeah. very sweet. Hmm. And it's bean. And it's just... Um, not my favorite. It's not my favorite. But they do make little pastries, come to think of it, that have like the red bean. I do like the red bean. I know yes, you're not you into do. that. Yes, you do. The no. red bean and yellow bean, and it comes like a little pastry. That I dig. And I also like, when I was a kid, we used to make like whenever, my mom used to have rice going all the time, being Filipino. And so we had rice. And then like the stuff that was coming off the top, it was kind of like, you know, uh, like what's floating on the top, basically mm -hmm. the rice, mm -hmm. uh, whatever. It's basically it looked like little sheets of plastic. Yes. Whatever you put that, you add sugar in it, and then they and then you mm. you, you get enough of it, you pound it together, mm -hmm. and then you got uh, rice cake. What's the thing we had when we were traveling? Is that what you're talking about? The pastry we were in. Korea? Oh, We've been a lot about, of places. You mean this Taiwan, year. Taiwan. Or, no. or North Korea. I think it was no North Korea. I think it was uh, North Korea. <laughs> so we were in no South Korea. It's like a whole other country over there. <laughs> it's like a whole other country. <laughs> what were the pastries we had? Remember we got off the, you would say like it's, we got to like find these. It's like a whole other country like Alaska. Yeah, it's like oh, a whole. Yeah, no, it's beautiful. What is it? Um, Do you know what I mean? It's like a donut, like a doughy kind of thing with a bean inside and some yes. cream. Mm. That, that, was in, um, that was in Taiwan. Okay. Okay. And it's a... Um, I forgot that you guys also went to Taiwan. We yes, went to so many places. Jamie and I went to Taiwan. It was without it was me. I know. I'm sorry. It was, but we we came back quick and we tried not to have any fun while we were there. <laughs> <laughs> but we had. Um, Man, I remember he'd be like, "We're having fun. Let's stop." It's like it's like yes, uh, it's called a, uh, well, that is a different one. It's called Soshibao. Mm. Soshibao. It's um, and that, that's just a Cantonese uh, way of saying it. It's a hot bun. It's like a it's like a rice bun. If I'm not correct, it's like a rice doughy bun, mm -hmm. and inside it's a little piece of pork. And they have some that's like vegetable. Wait, is that a dessert? No, 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 oh, no, no. It's okay. like it's a it's a savory dish. 
Oh, I was. Uh, okay, there are sorry, some sweet ones. The sweet ones that they make, they're mm-hmm. they're they're more of a pastry thing. Mm. But this is like a doughy kind of. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's got dough. It's very soft and it's mm-hmm. hot. And they got like a little bit of pork in the middle, and that was ridiculous. Mm. We used to get like literally, you know, those pink donut boxes, the big thick one. There? Yeah. We used to get that filled with the uh, saucer bar. It was so good. So yeah, it was good, wasn't it? And she, they how nice were they? They brought it to us hot. It was so nice. And then then I tried. Um, duck neck on that same trip delicious that's oh, my yeah, favorite yeah. thing it's, it looks like the worst thing you've ever seen in your yes, life it's it basically so good. yeah it's basically well it's a duck head and the neck and that's it mm-hmm. and it looks black and it literally is charcoal black because they cook it in uh molasses amazing mm-hmm. I, just bought, really I just bought some thanks to and david that one <laughs> yeah so the best part was mm-hmm. well he didn't buy duck neck he bought molasses yeah, but I'm gonna make some duck neck. <laughs> so the thing was, I really what I love about Patricia. We're at we're at this. The beautiful thing about Taiwan, we're we're, we're in um, in Taipei, and we're um, we're walking around these these beautiful night markets, and they had this incredible. Uh, these you know out the beautiful stuff is like shrimp and all these incredible yeah, street food. exotic it's street amazing. food amazing yeah. street food and great soups and noodles that's the thing great noodles mm-hmm. and things and um, and really fresh seafood and uh, the one thing that looked really like I would have never touched it or eaten it but J- uh, our, our buddy Jimmy said uh, Jimmy Huang said mm-hmm. like. Uh, Oh yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Just duck neck is good. No, don't touch me. Duck neck is good. Because it doesn't look good. No, it doesn't look good. It looks it like it, it looks because like, they keep the head. Those are yeah. duck neck. And yeah. also, like the, the, you see the head and it's hanging and it's, well, that's the, very the, Asian. The tongue is out. Yeah, I remember when not, like, when I went to the lesson. Philippines. I know. I'd say when I <laughs> when I went to the tongue is out. When I went to the <laughs> Philippines, <laughs> they, they serve the 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 fish with the head on it and stuff. People in America just assume it's like you know they get a fillet like you know they mm-hmm. like they go buy a hamburger yeah, or no something. Head. It wasn't like a live. Yeah, thing. I'm assuming there's just fillets floating around the ocean. <laughs> yeah, like I don't want these eyes. <laughs> and like they used to when they they used to you know when I was in Asia when mm-hmm. I was like seven eight years old and you had like you ordered shrimp the whole they brought the. They brought the whole shrimp, and you could see like the the head and the eyeballs looking at you. You gotta eat me, <laughs> and uh, and so yeah, it's just it was a different uh, different thing. But so the duck neck, but it's beautiful. I mean, it's, it's, it's not really a lot of meat good. on there. It's a neck no. for crying out loud. Yeah, exactly. But it's beautiful. It tastes delicious. But the little, right? the little, yeah, meat. But what that made it you want to get that? Well, because I try everything. I don't. I don't have a problem with uh, with food, to be honest. Yeah, I would try it, and if I don't like it, I don't like it. But I, I, it, it would be really hard for me to say no i don't want to try that mm. yeah and it was good and it was like you could see other yeah. people were buying it and go okay let's it, check it, it was out. delicious how I lucky really it. is the guy that clearly showed up at the duck last like the other people had taken all the good parts and he was yeah. like you guys took all this this is bullshit and then he was like you guys are just delicious <laughs> 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 you but left it, me with the neck and it's amazing yeah. but it, you know it's like you they have, sell that in mexico too but it's not uh cooked in molasses yes but it's uh roasted Mm-hmm. Like in the rotisserie oh, just an chicken, X, huh? just the neck. You gotta get like twelve necks for a meal. I mean, you need to get like, I mean, just <laughs> like how many necks? How many, how many ducks got to die so this yeah. guy can eat? <laughs> I'm saying, hey, this guy's yeah. got twelve ducks down. He's still feet? hungry. Chicken feet. Chicken feet. Have you, have you ever had it? Uh, it's too too rough. I used to give it. I used well, to, you have to cook it. <laughs> oh yeah, well, Patricia, Patricia used to get pissed off because I used to give like my, my dog for a while. Our dog mm-hmm. died of diabetes horribly, mm-hmm. but he, um, yeah. he, Oscar. We used to, I used to, you know, my my brother in law Matt. He had hit all his dogs very healthy. And he had them. He said, "Well, you want them to lose weight and get healthy and everything, then you just uh, you know give them give them a, put them on a raw food diet." And I'm like, "What do you mean raw food? You know, don't cook the meat." So I started just giving him like you know snacks. I give him like you know a couple of raw chicken feet. Yeah, I think I can figure out why they're losing weight on this <laughs> diet. She's like, I'm not eating this. Yeah, I'm not thing. eating that shit. <laughs> <laughs> so Patricia would go, you're not even going to trim the nails? I said, what do you oh trim the nails? God. Trim the nails or the toenails? That's the whole fun. It's like a toothpick to them. Let them enjoy himself. No. She wanted me to trim the toenails of the chicken feet that I'm feeding to the dog. It's really nice. Well, yeah, because that thing, it was like, it was horrible. It was like the claw basically in there. and I used to feed him worse thing when he was, a, when he was younger. Yes, used to go, there's this great thing. Chinese market called Hawaii. Mm-hmm. It's called Hawaii. It has nothing to do with Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> it's, in, it's in San Gabriel, Chinatown, right on Valley Street. You've been out there, right? And it's anything you want, unfortunately. You want to get a turtle, they have to kill it there because that's the state law. Oh, my God. But you God. can get a live turtle, and it doesn't leave live with you. But mm. there's, like, all kinds of seafood and crazy stuff that, you know, you literally, like, when we were doing that movie, The Chosen One, 
um, we had some, you know, uh, Arawako shaman that were on it and uh, on the movie and uh, playing themselves, of course. Uh, they, they, they really wanted to eat um, an armadillo. All right. They hmm. literally said, hmm. I want to eat an armadillo. And I said, you know what? There's one crazy place in town. Mm-hmm. And sure enough, you go to this, whole, it's, it's a Chinese mm-hmm. grocery store. We're gonna, I said, um, I, it's kind of a strange question here. You know, do you guys, um, I got some friends here from Columbia. They, want, <laughs> they said, yeah, yeah, what? I said, do you have any, uh, you know, they kind of want to get an armadillo. Oh, yeah, you go, uh, I'll 11 C. I'll 11, yeah, yeah, yeah. Across from the meerkats. Oh <laughs> Across from the meerkats. <laughs> they got oh the armadillo. God. And it was a frozen armadillo. Oh my God. What? I'm not kidding. A frozen armadillo. And they they were psyched. They they weren't as psyched that it was frozen because you know you know if you want to eat an armadillo you want to get a fresh. You gotta go fresh. fresh. Yeah. You gotta go yeah. fresh. Exactly. You gotta go fresh. And so we we gave them that, and they they just I don't know what how they, did they how did they even cook that. You know what? I swear to you, I just handed it to them, the frozen armadillo and run. They were, <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't want to see what they were gonna do okay. with it. And I, and I never even asked. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hey, how was that armadillo the other day? Mm-hmm. I just was like I'm just gonna give this to you guys, and let's just pretend this didn't happen. It was like a drug deal. Hmm. That is so just wild. Yeah, I that know. I don't know if I would try an armadillo. Yeah, it seems like uh, um, I don't know what 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 you eat it, but I guess it, it had the shell on it—not the shell, but the you know the the part of the I don't know. I don't know. Maybe don't they know make the a hell. soup like a shell. or something. Yeah, I think you know what you're right. They did make a soup out of it. I do remember mm. that. That's what they do the turtles, right? They yes. did the turtle soup a lot. They did make a big. They did soup it in out Mexico it. too, but it's in the uh, in Villahermosa. Mm-hmm. They do that. Yeah, turtle yeah. soup. They used to do this thing in Taiwan. I can't remember the name of it, but they no. closed it finally. But when I was there as a younger man in Taiwan, when I was promoting movies, they used to take this thing called Snake Alley, which was mm. horrible because they would literally like have snakes, and they would you could have like you could they'd kill a snake, cook a snake right there. Which I don't like this. The seems like a mm-hmm. touristy thing. If you know if you're gonna eat something, eat it, whatever you know. Whether it's an armadillo, if you're gonna make soup out of it, well, that's up to you, you know. But like. They would like it seemed like this machismo thing where mm. they would like you know you could drink the snake blood and you could drink the snake piss I swear to God snake piss beer snake blood beer and like you hmm. know and like I was going nah we were just somewhere where a guy offered us snake venom sake or we it was either Japan or yeah know. Korea it was South Korea interesting so, so what do you got on the menu we have the tonight we got the you know you got you got the tequila you got the also, we got the vodka. We have a you know vodka on the rocks. I can we want to this. Also, we got the snake venom uh, sauce. <laughs> what? Yeah. So, but yeah, it, it is a little different. That's what I do feel weird about. Like some parts, I love Asia and I love mm-hmm. South Korea. We had an incredible time. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. I think like they gotta culturally stop people from like, hey, no more ape paw, you know, right. in your tincture. You know, whatever the hell that is. Or just tell them it is, but don't really get the ape stuff. You know, it's a bit much. You know, the rhino horn, you know, they, they got to cut that shit out. Yeah. There's no more of the rhino horn, you know, soup or whatever the hell they make with it, you know. Mm-hmm. There's about eight left. They got one in a zoo last year. It was the most depressing thing I've ever this seen in my life. Ever. In Paris, they're going like, what? In a zoo? They killed the rhino in a zoo? The rhino finally is like, well, you know, it's not the wild, but at least, you know, here I am. I'm safe. I'm in the zoo. I can hear other animals. It's like being out there. They bring me my food. Who are these motherfuckers going over? Oh, my God, I'm not safe here. You know what I mean? Aww. I know. Isn't that the most? That was a horrible thing. I know. But um, going back to eating uh, strange things, mm-hmm. I do like that Escamole. It tastes good. Oh, it tastes like butter. That. Yeah, we it's talked just, about that. It's just, you can't talk. You, but you have not had that yet, Jamie. No, well, I don't. I've never heard of Eskimo. Next time we're in Mexico City. Eskimo in Mexico City, that's okay. you ant that. larvae. I live near a lot of Eskimo lives. Uh, <laughs> 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 it's ants. Shoots and scores Come on. from way down. Eskimo. Battles of deep three. I may be mispronouncing. Jamie Alisso. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, ant larva. So, um, mm-hmm. guys. So yes. we're, uh, you're about to embark. We're doing a, another rewrite on season three. Yes. What the hell's going on? Yep. Well, a lot. Yeah? Yes. It's going to be fun. Uh, we're season three of Real some, Rob. Mm-hmm. Yes. We're making some... Uh, changes. Changes. I'm super excited because I feel yes. like 
I don't know. Rob used to say, and I hope this is attributed to you, but Rob used to say writing is rewriting is rewriting. Yeah. And this is the most fun I've ever had writing because I feel like we... Well, that's, mm-hmm. that's, I'm quoting Hemingway. Are you? Hemingway okay. wrote a letter to a friend, and it was an 11-page letter. And uh, he said, I'm sorry the letter's so long. I just didn't have enough time. Mm. Because writing is rewriting, rewriting, rewriting. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean, it is. You know, the thing is, you don't think, well, I can't get any better. I mean, what am I, you know? You got to just you keep working it. And the idea that you start with anything and you know exactly where you're going, that's not really mm-hmm. the creative process. Is you know, you kind of have an idea where you like to get to and then mm-hmm. see what happens. And then after a while, something hits you and just like, you know, I don't know where it comes from or whatever it is, but it seems like you're seeing the scenes happening and you're just writing it down. That's when yeah. it's really fun. Mm-hmm. You know? You're right. Yep. You're so right. Again. Again. I am. I wish I could take credit for that one. You're so smart. You're so smart. <laughs> <laughs> I don't hope I don't end the same as, as Hemingway on that. He just I don't know if he killed himself right after he said that or what. Oh God. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Everything was so nice. Everything was going so good. Yeah. So uh, what else? What else is so, going on? Well, uh, I'm going to Vegas. Ooh. I'm driving. You were going to come with me, Jamie. I was. Yes, but we was. got. Uh, we got to work. We have to work. Yeah. So I'm going to miss it. I was very excited. I felt like if I went with you, I would be pa- having fun. And I feel like we have to work. And we kind of sort of got a bit of a deadline earlier. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so we're, yeah. we're getting to work. Oh, are we, you excited? We, the responsible people. <laughs> 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 You asshole. <laughs> you know, though, I am excited about um, not the drive out there, but like, I there's like a because we shot Real Rob season two out there at the South Point. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And like the. Um, it was amazing, by the they, way. Yeah, they have bowling alley, like 15 restaurants or whatever, maybe mm-hmm. nine. I don't know. What do I say? There's before. horses there. Yeah. What? It's like a horse arena, arena. in the back. Yeah. So, really? anyway. But here's the thing. I always walk by this restaurant that looked like, ah, it's just like it was one of those, like, it looked like a fast foody kind of mm-hmm. crappy mm-hmm. one, you know, that's had seafood. And it's like, yeah, hey, you know, I, don't know, I never want to eat there. But, cause, but I always thought it was packed. Hmm. And it's like the last time, and I've been, I, and keep this in mind, I've been like about three, four years now working mm-hmm. at that place. Mm-hmm. And then my buddy, you know, Mike Lebanati, lovely guy, and he, he books me there and like uh, we always have fun and go out and eat. And he always said the place is amazing. And, but he says everything's amazing. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. Oh, you got to have this story. It's amazing. You know, something whatever. And I said, eh. and then finally, I just, I walked over. What do you guys have here? I said, we got fish and chips. And then, uh, okay, all right. I'll take some fish and chips. It was amazing. Really? Mm. I mean, literally like, you know, wow. remember when we were in New Zealand? Yes. And had the most like incredible <laughs> yes. like, room service. Uh, we had room service fish and chips. It was like the greatest meal. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was just uh, with the freshest fish. It's on the other side of the planet. But it's like, it's just a cleaner part of the yes. world than you can mm-hmm. imagine. Mm-hmm. And it was just beautiful, like sea bream or whatever the hell that fish is. But wasn't that also from the restaurant next door? What I mean? It's in, uh, in New Zealand. Yeah. Right? Like I don't it, know. Yeah. I, yeah I, I think what they do is like they they uh they get their fish and chips from that restaurant. Oh, it was next unbelievable. Door. Unless they bring it to your room. I wouldn't put it past Rob to order room service and tell them to get it from somewhere else. Is it possible <laughs> that that's what happens? <laughs> I know I am so spoiled. It was the best fish and chips ever. I'm starving. Yeah. It, it was, was really good. Are you right? hungry again? I mean, I wasn't, and then this sounds ridiculous. Oh. You know what, though? There's one dish that, like, a truth, though, the, I, the Chinese restaurant, I like the Harvard Seafood Restaurant out on Rosemead there. Here, we're talking about food only on this podcast. I know. What's going on? Yeah, we're, we're all we're, starving. Yeah. No, the, <laughs> on Rosemead, in Rosemead, like uh-huh. 3737 Rosemead is a place called Harbor Seafood Restaurant or Seafood Harbor yeah, Restaurant. Yeah, I was going to say. I'm, uh, I, I, I've been going there for a, for a 15 years. I still don't remember the name. Yeah. It's one of those places. This is here? And it's in English. Yeah, here in L.A. Okay. It's out in Rosemead. It's basically yeah. it's in the San Gabriel adjacent, whatever the hell that means. And it's... Uh, it's really good. They have this one dish that I really love. Lobster Cantonese style. Mm. Ugh, and delicious. it's like... It's literally... A hundred cloves of garlic. Yes. I'm not kidding. Yes. It's a hundred cloves of garlic and these mm-hmm. what are those the those those tiny they're Mexican peppers. Those mm, little tiny yeah, red peppers. Like arbol. Yeah. Arbol. Chile de arbol. But I'm, Chile I'm sure it's arbol. not Mexican chile, but it's, but it's, you it's know, they it's, use it. I recognize it. it. And it that delicious. together with a hundred cloves of garlic with a, and they cook it with lobster. Or they yeah. do it with crab and it's fresh. It's the most ridiculous thing. Yes. And it is incredibly uh, you know, addictive. You eat this thing, it's like, this is the most greatest thing you've ever had in your life. Wow. Yeah. I mean, if you like garlic, if you don't like garlic, if you don't like, you're in trouble. Mm-hmm. You're in trouble. Yeah. If you're a vampire, you're in trouble. Sounds amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of garlic, but a it's lot. good.
All right, here's some dates to see Rob Schneider. Uh, all of June, I'll be with the great Adam Sandler. Is 100% fresher tour. If you haven't seen his show on Netflix, uh, his comedy special is ridiculous. Also, his movie with Jennifer Aniston, 100% fresher. <laughs> That's this. I'm sorry. That's the tour. The the movie's murder mystery, and it's a, a the most watched movie of the year on Netflix. Sixty million people watched it the first night, Friday night. Did you know that, David? And then I'm gonna be, and hopefully you guys will come out there for that. Um, it's it's uh, the Flying Monkey Performance Center, which makes sense for me. Uh, in Saint Augustine, uh, I'm sorry. No, the Flying Monkey and Performance Center. That's in Plymouth, New Hampshire, where Adam Sandler's from, New Hampshire. And then I'm going to be at the Fox Theater. July 12th, the Fox Theater in Ledyard, Ledyard uh, Connecticut. One show only. Then July 13th, Wilbur Theater. They're there in Boston, Mars. Come on down, Wicked Pisser. Right there, July 13th. Come on down and we'll talk about, um, you know, uh, you know the, um, the owner of the Patriots. He got a hand job. He did, and they arrested him. I they, missed the story. Well, they closed wow. the, the. No, no, no. The guy, the guy, uh, Robert Kraft. Mm-hmm. You know the story. He got a hand job in Florida. He's a guy's married to his wife for fifty years. He dies mm-hmm. of cancer. He has a glass of wine at some restaurant in Florida. He goes, mm-hmm. "Hey, nah, let's, let's, get a, let's get a hand job." Well, that's right he was right. feeling. Well, I go. He was feeling horny. He's, he's feeling horny. He's you know he's like, ah, you know what? I earned it. I own the Patriots. We just won six Super Bowls. The Six Super Bowl more than any other team, or we tied the Steelers for whatever. Anyway, well, there's the places, you know, the, the that looks like an Asian massage okay. parlor. Okay. I can probably uh, enjoy myself for a few minutes. Mm-hmm. Those guys have hands. <laughs> yeah. Jesus they, Christ. So, um, and they, uh, you know, they the place got shut down, and, you know, there was somebody, he got, I don't know if he got arrested or whatever, but, like, really? they found out, and, like. Was it not a place that normally did this and he talked them into it, or this was a place where this was? I'm pretty this sure this was not like uh, they weren't working on shoulders mm-hmm. in there. But anyway, oh. it's like the poor guy. Assuming. Leave him alone. Absolutely. No. What? You're against that? No. He could, well. Well, I know. I get yeah. the other side of it, too, that maybe some of the, the you know, the, the people working there were come over from China. We're, we're told they're going to be tourists. The next thing you know, they're in a room, and then there's like, well, what's going to happen in here? It doesn't seem like the, the Empire State Building. What's going to happen? Well, um, in about an hour, we're going to bring in a dick, and then in another hour, we're going to bring in another one. That hadn't occurred to me, that side yes, of it. I'm which sorry. is horrible, and I'm against all of that completely. Mm-hmm. You guys what? are terrible. I know, I feel bad. No, if he, I mean, seriously, if he wants a hand job, why can't he do that uh, trick? Like, what is the name of that trick when you see it on one hand? Until oh, yeah. Until the, the hand gets numb. The stranger. The stranger. It's he could have done that. You sit on one hand and then you masturbate. And then it feels like somebody else is doing it. <laughs> <laughs> and I told you guys, I got so drunk I did it wrong once. And I sat on my penis till it fell asleep. And then I felt like I was giving some other guy a hand job. Which it's like, <laughs> now I'm more depressed. <laughs> this sucks. <laughs> wow. Yeah. But wait, I have a question. Why can't this guy, yes. mm-hmm. who's a well-known man... Mm-hmm. Not to me. I pretended I knew who he was that whole time you were telling yeah, the story. Yeah. I don't know about mm-hmm. sports. Yeah, well, how couldn't he get a hand job by buying a glass, a drink for someone? Like in the old fashioned. Good way. Lord, Jamie, because you can just he's... buy hand jobs like that. No, I mean, like, why couldn't he court a lady? That's got to be a tough phone call. Hey, listen. <laughs> <laughs> My name's Bob. I like to buy you a glass of wine. But here, here's, <laughs> here's the, the other deal. side of the deal. But I mean, like, but I mean, why couldn't he court a woman? Why couldn't he? I'm not saying go on Tinder, mm-hmm. but why couldn't he? Why not? He someone? should go on Tinder. Maybe he was feeling spontaneous. Yeah, I want to do some crazy tonight. <laughs> I know. I, but see, that's the problem. That's why. Maybe that's part of the turn on. I maybe I can get arrested. Wouldn't that be a new story? No, Let's but but again, Fuck! that's a, that, that's the problem. That because. I, I think the guys see yeah. women yeah. as something you can buy. It's not. It's, That's not it, nice. I agree with that. Yeah, it's not it merchandise. Way. You know, like if you give a hand job to someone. Yeah, but I'm saying, but the, a he blow didn't, job to someone, or you have sex with someone, is it should be because you want to. Like both parties want. I'm to. all for that, obviously, but I'm just saying, like he didn't, he didn't open up the business of of uh, oh, you of know hand jobs of Miss <laughs> of Miss Lucy Lucy's. You know, massage parlor. It yeah. wasn't. He, it wasn't. No, like, I know. I agree. I mean, obviously, he went for the. I mean, it would be even worse if he forced someone. Oh to yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm just saying, like hand job. He like, just walked into an established place of business that mm-hmm. he was hoping that this that it was known for this. I mean, I don't know. 
I heard it was the top rub and tug on Yelp. I mean, like just five star <laughs> reviews from everyone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I didn't mean it that way. I always wanted to make it clear. I didn't mean like you could buy a woman. I just meant like, why can't he date somebody no, who's absolutely. famous? That's all I kind of yeah. meant. I think he is. I think this has nothing to do with that. I see what you're saying. I think, like, I think mm-hmm. there's something like with guys like I me, mean, this might be kind of exciting. And like, it's mm-hmm. like, you know, years ago, Hugh Grant on, on Sunset Boulevard. Mm-hmm. He's driving by. You know what I feel like? I'm sorry, I make everything sound Australian. You know what? I'm not Australian. <laughs> I'm English, but I feel like getting a bit randy. I'm going to stop over there. Next thing you know. You know, um, yeah. I Boston. think I might enjoy myself in a different way this evening. So anyway, he can have any girl he wants in a bar, and he ends up, eh. Yeah, I mean, obviously, because I I feel like that you know, I'm not, um, I'm I'm not saying that prostitution is good, but it's like one of the oldest, uh, you know, like professions. Uh, professions. It mm-hmm. is, it is, and it's I've because heard of that. that. Mm-hmm. Because no, it's yeah. a it's a it's an easy um, transaction. That's what it is. Mm-hmm. It's the a training's real- also very easy. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, it is. That you get what you you what you pay for, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, it, it, you don't have to go through the whole thing of you know like having a relationship or whatever. Right, lying and exactly. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think not about flying back to to Alaska, <laughs> staying in oh, staying in another country? <laughs> what? What do you think about being in the parking lot of a comedy <laughs> club? <laughs> what? <laughs> but it's interesting how how you know like as as guys, mm-hmm. yeah. You have that need. Like, there are not like places that are like male prostitutes for women, you know? A lot, you I know think they're I mean? just called bars. You just walk in and ask any <laughs> yeah. man. That's what always made me like laugh about the, the you know, uh, Richard Gere's American Gigolo. I'm like, get out of here. <laughs> right. These beautiful, Lauren Hutton needs to hire a guy right. to have sex with. She can just go any bar she wants, you know? Yeah, no, but I mean, I'm sure that those places also exist. But I'm just saying, like, there's not, know, there's no. not such a thing, there's like, no. you know, like that urge of, yeah, I need to have that guy, and like, no. What's your feeling on an Amsterdam women in the windows? It's totally legal. Mm-hmm. How do you feel about that? Well, you know what? I mean, at the end of the day, I would say like each woman owns her own body, and she you can, can do, do whatever she I know, wants. But in the situations like that, like where the prostitution is like not. It's 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 a some form of indentured servitude, which is some form of like sex slavery, which is mm-hmm. a real thing that does exist. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like you know they have to like they you know they they're told they're going to be making a certain amount of money. They get over there. Well, you have to pay this off first before you can say anything. The next thing you know, they just keep you there for years. So there's that side to it, which is a real side. Mm-hmm. That's a real it's side. It's a, really a real yeah. ugliness. That's that's part of mm-hmm. the you know indentured servitude slavery whatever you want to call it sex slavery you know so mm-hmm. i you know i get that but i was just saying for uh robert Kraft, he should be allowed to get a hand job mm-hmm. if he wants one he can also go to where it's legal exactly why can't he just do that he could have because he's in florida he had dinner he had a glass of wine the massage parlor was there he was there his <laughs> penis was there it felt randy oh god <laughs> jesus i've never been to one of those places, but I do have friends. We've gotten a massage together. Scene. What are you talking about? Oh yeah, oh, I meant to the, to the tug in the to the extra place. We've been to a massage parlor, you and me. We got a hand job together. <laughs> <laughs> this is before oh, the woman even came in. <laughs> no. You were giving it to, to each other. Yeah, this is yeah. good lord. It was close. So. No, we we got no seriously. We got like a, <laughs> we were like it was really uncomfortable because we actually went into a room. But and it tell was like, about before tell well, they. Remember you walked in and ordered the massage and they literally said something to you like, this is not, like oh, yeah, we're not yeah. touching your dicks. <laughs> like that's, that's basically what they said to me and Rob because we look like maybe that's what we were looking for. Yeah. And Rob's like, oh no, I totally understand. No, 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 we're fine with that. Yeah. I actually then, would like to get an actual massage, a foot massage or anything because yeah. I like to get foot massage, you know? Yeah, and if it's the dick, I'd like it to be at the very end because <laughs> I'm going to feel guilty the entire time. No, but we did like the... Um, so so Jamie what do you, think, and I, you guys did a couple's massage? Mm-hmm. No, we went into a yeah, they literally like put us in a room and they just they literally is walking on your back, which is not like the best massage. Yeah. They're walking on your back. And uh yeah, they so we were both right next to each other and getting With, like I this is my first massage. Mm-hmm. We had to put special underwear on. Mm. You have to go shower yeah. and then you put on like almost like a bikini <laughs> bottom. <laughs> And then I go in and Rob Schneider is next to me in the same yeah. room. I'm yeah. like, is this how this works? In, I thought, in a bikini. In the same, yeah, in the same in thing the with same, a blanket. In the same tongue. 
<laughs> no, and yeah, and you put that on, and they stand on your back, which I don't think is the best one, the best massage. No, but I do like like the reflexology. That mm-hmm. that's some really good work and stuff. It really does. Like I believe it because they have like those maps, and like your lungs are right below your big toe. Really, yeah. is it? I thought my lungs were <laughs> in my chest. No, 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 no. No, but actually, it, and it it does it does really um, work? help your circulation. I the Chinese say you die from your feet up. Mm. Yeah, so take care of your feet. I was getting a foot massage once. Mm-hmm. Did you ever just you ever just bomb? I was getting a foot massage once, and the lady was like telling me each part of your foot mm-hmm. represents a different part of your body, and I said I can't hear your hands over my ears because she was touching my feet, <laughs> <laughs> and nobody laughed. Oh, yeah. but that was getting a, grunky. That was a rough massage at times, wasn't it? I don't like those. Kind a little of bit. It was a little rough, you know, because the feet. These are big women too, but let's be honest. Oh yeah. These are like these are women that were coming in about a buck seventy five. Yep, light think. heavyweights. Yeah, they were easily like easily cruiser, <laughs> getting out of the cruiser. You know, it's like a cruiser weight. You know, when in the morning when you weigh when you do the weigh in, mm-hmm. put that in then, and then then you eat and then you drink the water and then you, you know because you're the weigh in that you got the fight that night and so you can just eat and everything. So that, so these are like one seventy five. Let's be honest. They were yeah, but there were moments when like I she had her elbow in a spot of my body that uh-huh. she somehow knew was extremely painful and she wouldn't let it go and it was actually so I, at one point I was just like I've told you everything I know I have no more <laughs> information like it was so painful but I guess yeah. that's good for you but hey but I don't get that I like if I'm gonna get a massage I know I do like I'll, a tough I like, one I like I like soft and relaxing and mm. with music and yeah. candles no, I, like, I like to be, have to be like I wanna know that I'm getting massaged there was also a communication language issue where Rob wanted a one hour massage mm-hmm and it was a two hour massage. I think that just kind and of. I was wanting to get the hell out of there. And it was mm-hmm. so it made you feel like crazy because you're mm-hmm. like, this is the longest hour of mm-hmm. my. Because we didn't know. Oh. It was the two hour. Yeah. That's and a then, long massage. But then after that, everything was basically closed. Uh huh. The, the ramen shop was fucking ridiculous. Dude, amazing. I mean, literally, like, well, we went the other day, that, that place uh, on the street. Yeah. This ramen. What was so great about it? Well, I mean, I don't understand how this is like so much better than. Like, <sighs> and like, when you think of ramen, you think of like your broke college student, whatever. Yeah. But this place was like insanely good. Like, Insane. There's like they put like they got like a big piece of pork in it, mm-hmm. and they got like noodles, and they got this sauce, a hot sauce, as hot as you can take. Right? It wasn't like you had to take a shower; you were completely soaked. When I you're was done. sweating. It was like a broth hot sauce, and we were both like, "This is way too hot," but we can't stop eating it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we were just sweating. It was but mm. so good. That was unbelievable. That was amazing. Japan was incredible. How about then we went to this one place that had like the the seafood that had like the, I'm saying like it was a supermarket with nothing but bluefin tuna. Yeah. It's like a bluefin tuna. It was, it was the part of Japan that's the most famous for uh, uh, for sushi and for, for like where they catch the, the bluefin and everything. Yeah. Or, or at least where the, where you go buy it. It was crazy. And, and amazing sushi. And we should say we weren't there just hanging out on vacation. Mm-hmm. Me and Rob did a USO tour. For the military, I think I we did like a fourteen say. day. Yeah. Uh, we did two of those this year. And yeah. how how was that? Because oh, well, I know the, that we we started talking again about food, but what what is that experience like? Not well, the food. I mean, just I mean, traveling for meeting soldiers. Yes, like, performing for they the were, troops. They were great. Well, first of all, they love those countries. I mean, literally, the people in South Korea love it, and the people mm-hmm. in it's an incredible place. I mean, uh, and then uh, Japan, they love Japan. I mean, the, literally the soldiers, if they can stay, stay. Mm-hmm. They love it over there. They just, you get lo- used to the lifestyle. Mm-hmm. They love the food and they love the people. Mm-hmm. And uh, The shows are amazing, <laughs> right? Because they're, yeah, they're just they're, so appreciative. And it, oh, yeah, no, no, no. They, they really want, and you know what? The, and then we felt like the pressure because we're like, because we were there, you know, it was like Christmas time. Mm-hmm. So we were there for like, this is their Christmas show. Right. So like, you don't want to screw up. This is their Christmas. Mm-hmm. This is like the present. Yeah. You know, so you better put on a good show. So we both had that, felt that responsibility. Oh, good. So like, you got to put on a, you got to mm-hmm. put on a show now. And so yeah. we did. We delivered. And then, you know, the best part is like, you know, they, these guys are ha- having a good time. They want to take your picture. And like, we went up to the north of Japan, which is beautiful. And it was like snowed in. Like I was going to say, how was the weather? It was like as snowy uh, as you can imagine. Like it was like Vermont. And it was just, uh, and, and the, you know, the, 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 the troops were great. They were really fun. But there's like, it was all, um, and I remember the one place we were at, was it, they called the tip of the spear? Mm-hmm. Greenland? No, the tip of the spear. No, no, no. That's, um, 
Now that was tip of the spear is where you get the South hand Korea. job and the massage for <laughs> twenty bucks. <laughs> now the uh, tip oh of the, yeah, the tip of the spear, the first the the line the, of yeah, basically the tip nice. of the spear is South Korea, mm-hmm. where they like if and they're all it was all pilots. It was an aircraft. It was an air, air force base. Yeah, and these are the guys. If if the shit happens, this is the tip of the spear. This is what they go first. These are the guys who are like. Get in your jet. We're going. Like Top Gun. We're at battle. Yeah, yeah. And all these guys were all pilots. And they were like older, too. This is the only place of people around your age, mm-hmm. 40, you mm-hmm. know, in their 30s and 40s, because they're all pilots, and they were there with their families. And they, they were just the greatest, the greatest group of guys. Want to hear something great, Patty, that yes, Rob would always. do? That Rob would do almost every night that I loved? The um, <clears throat> promoter would go, okay, this place seats like 700 people, mm-hmm. and we're going to do like a drawing or something, and we're going to do like a meet and greet mm-hmm. where 50 of you can come back, and we'll do like a meet and greet and get a picture taken. And then me and Rob would go up on stage, at the, and then the promoter guy would go like, oh, he's a great dude, Frank. He's a great guy. He'd be like, yeah, we'll do the show, and then the meet and greet would be like another half hour. You guys would be back at the hotel by 11. And every night on stage, we'd be having so much fun mm-hmm. doing like jokes back and forth. Rob would be like, pictures for everybody, like <laughs> 700 people. Oh, my God. And we would hang out until hour. until everybody got everybody oh, that's a handshake nice. and a picture everybody. i have to say that you are very good at that like you're very kind you are well thank in you in giving back to your fans no it's it's a pleasure i mean these are the guys they, they like when they when they sign up they sign up yeah and they're over there and, and and some of the places they don't get to bring their families we were in uh in the bahamas and uh they don't get their families over there yep and it was like it was really cool because it was like it was like a, a that was a naval base and um, what was it? Come on, what was it called in the Bahamas? We still got to send them that stuff from Down Periscope, my movie. Oh, it was a submarines, like a sub submariners, and so they mm-hmm. like. There's like you know not a lot of movies about submarines, and if you're on a submarine, you want to watch movies about submarines. Mm-hmm. So I made a movie on a submarine called Down Periscope with Kelsey Grammer and you know a bunch of other great guys, and um, you know uh, Harry Dean Stanton was in it, Bruce Dern, and uh, a bunch of guys, um, and. Um, these guys love that movie like crazy. And they're like, you know, and then they, they, people remember stuff about the movies. Yeah. I don't remember, mm-hmm. but they remember specifically stuff. And I'm like, you like know, what? like they would yell at me, prepare for dive. And I said, I, I want it. And they I was like a bunch of times, prepare for dive. And I remember <laughs> and I went like, and I went like, I'm sorry, but what is that? No, the movie, you yell that. <laughs> That's another thing I like about Rob. And I'm not just kissing your ass. Some, I know so many comedians on the road, or actors turned comedians, or maybe just actors, where they get annoyed when people yell the phrases at them from mm-hmm, the movies. Mm-hmm. And Rob, never once have I ever seen him. I've uh, he always been super cool about that. Even at like a show when it's kind of mm-hmm. annoying, he'll always give the guy a little. If someone yells, it's hard. I understand it's probably hard to see Rob and not yell. You can do it for mm-hmm. some people, but you always treat those people with with respect. And sometimes he's even giving them a little of the bit, and then mm-hmm. says, "Hey, I want to do my act, but that's a little something for you." I get you know, but it's uh, you know. I don't even people don't even know that I do stand up, but we had a great time, huh? Awesome. Okay, so that'll be it. And if you want to get a hold of uh, Patricia Maya, Patricia Schneider, mm-hmm. where are they going to get a hold of you? You can find me on Instagram at I am Patricia Maya. And congrats on these new these co- these new dishes you're cooking. Thank you. Incredible. Yes, if you wanna if you wanna see some um, baking and and healthy cooking. healthier side of it, right? Yeah. You can you can find it over there. And what about Jamie Lisso? What is anybody? Well, how do people find him? Uh, my cell phone number is five eight five. No, uh, you can hit me up. This is kind of silly, but I, I my website is robschneidersfriend dot com just because I love it, and uh, also yeah, on Instagram at uh, I am Jamie Lisso. That's yeah, where I hang out mostly. Yes. Yeah. All right. So uh, thank you for listening again. I want to. I'll be at the uh, the Wilbur Theater. That's July thirteenth, Boston, Mass. Are you too tired? Do you have a long I'm worried. Well, I mean, you have a you, long drive. You're in. You get to Vegas tonight. No, you're doing no. a podcast. You have radio in the morning. Are you okay? I might. I might. You know, I got that electric car. I let it drive there once I get on the 15. We, we should put a book <laughs> note in this for next episode. Yeah. yeah. The conversation you guys had, where Rob and Patricia argued whether or not the car Rob drove home is a self-driving car. It was not. a self-driving <laughs> car. It, it drove not. itself. No, it, it drove, doesn't. It do drove that. itself. It's, no, I wasn't steering anymore. No, that's not. It true. did it on its own. No, we cannot. You're so, you don't. You don't even try it. You got to try it sometimes. She it says it's not a feature. It it's not a feature. It didn't mean it's not a feature. Well, Rob said he got home using. I the got feature. home using the feature. No. Yes. No, it's not possible. Good Lord, it is it's not a possible. Tesla self-driving car. You that's what, no, that's what I paid for. No, darling. No, no, no. I think you were just too tired. You don't remember. I wasn't turning anymore. Huh? 
Good Lord. Anyway, it's a self-driving car. No, it's not! A Tesla X self-driving. People I paid $2,500 no, 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 for that option. No, 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 I paid, I can show you. You either have a self-driving car or you're super lucky. Okay. I think he's super lucky, he's and I am super lucky that he's fine. All right, I made it. Well, hey, thanks, guys. I love you, Patricia. Okay, I love you. you've been listening to See What Happens podcast, and thank you to John Hunter for the beautiful music. Thank you, buddy. <laughs>